Welcome back to our CitusLink Pro user guide series. This is our step-by-step -step guide to setup, patching, setting levels, recording queues, and much more. We just went over the setup in the previous video. Welcome to adding and patching lights. In order to control the lights, there are two things we must do. Add the light in CitusLink Pro and configure the light. These actions can be done in either order. Normally it is simpler to patch the light first so you can make decisions about the DMX channels and the DMX profile. But sometimes if you don't know what mode you want to put them in, it may help to start by configuring the light. We're gonna start with adding and patching the lights in CitusLink Pro. Hit the green plus sign in the top right corner and select add new fixtures. When this new window pops up, it will first scan for Citus Bluetooth controlled lights. If there are any found that you wish to control over Citus Bluetooth, you can select them and press save. Otherwise, you will be adding the lights for DMX control. Go ahead and press the plus sign tile to add a new fixture. Here you will have two main options. You can search for the name of the manufacturer of the light you are trying to add, or you can create a new DMX profile if the fixture is not yet in the database. New light fixtures are being added all the time to Citus Link Pro. If the light fixture is in the Citus Link Pro database, select the light manufacturer, series, model, and profile. We're going to select Aperture, Mini, MC Pro, and Profile 1 CCT RGB 8-bit. Go ahead and click Next. The layout of this profile is Intensity, Color Temperature, Plus and Minus Green, Crossfade, Red, Green, blue and strobe, eight channels total. So when we add this light, we will see eight DMX channels. On this screen, we can confirm, and then we can enter the number of fixtures we want to patch. Let's add three fixtures. We can then set the DMX start address for the first fixture and select the DMX output you want to patch it to, DMX A, B, C, or D. You only need to split up your network on different universes if your fixtures exceed one universe. Also, to view the entire universe, you can press the dial pad button to show you the universe view. Here you can see the entire universe and the lights patched across it. It allows drag and drop of your new fixtures to assign new DMX channels and avoid any conflicts. Press and hold a fixture to reassign it. Keep in mind, when you change the DMX address in the patch, it also must be changed at the light. All changes made on this window are saved with each change. Press the X in the corner to close the universe view. Next, click Confirm to add the fixtures. Back on the Add New Fixtures page, you will now see the fixture type and the number of fixtures added. Press the plus sign tile to add another fixture type or press Save to add all the fixtures. If the light fixture does not yet exist in the library, you can create the DMX profile yourself you will need the DMX chart for the light from the lighting manufacturer, usually available from their website. After clicking the Add New Fixture tile on the Select a Profile pop-up, click Create New Profile. On this screen, enter in the manufacturer, series name, model, profile number, and profile name with 8-bit or 16-bit. All of these should be available on the DMX chart. Let's enter in Aperture, Electrostorm, CS15 for model, 1 for profile, and CCT RGB 8-bit for the profile name. This is the fixture's CCT and 8-bit profile layout and has a total of 8 DMX channels. We are going to enter each parameter based on the DMX chart. The crossfade button dropdown and preset icon will automatically fill out some of the more common DMX layouts. To enter in a DMX parameter, tap on one of the available DMX parameters and it will appear in the order you add them. Each parameter can have a default value for when you bring it up on the stage. For example, if I always want a light to turn on at 3200 Kelvin, I would set this as the default. When patching in 16-bit profiles, patch the 8-bit value followed by the 16-bit value. Plus and minus green channel can have ranged values which must be entered line by line according to the DMX chart. Some values like CCT and XY have minimum and maximum values. 
The DMX profile must be entered in exactly as the DMX chart states or the light will not respond correctly. After creating the DMX profile, you can select the DMX start address, select the universe, and then press save. On the add new fixture page, now press save to continue. Now that the lights are added, they will appear on your stage. But before we can start controlling the lights, we need to configure the light by setting the DMX address and profile on the light fixture. Before these lights get rigged up, we wanna prep them for use. There are a few main things we need to do with each light. First, you will want to make sure that the light has the latest firmware. For aperture lights, you can add them as a Citus Bluetooth fixture in Citus Link Pro and then check for updates on the fixture management page. Next, you will want to reset the light to factory settings. You want to start fresh with the default settings of the light so that it is cleared from the last shoot. On your MC Pro, Go to System Settings and then Factory Reset. Next, set the DMX profile that you just patched on the light, in this case, Profile 1 CCT RGB. Lastly, set the DMX start address you just patched. It is also a good idea to give each light a name or number, like 401 or Key Light, for easy reference when working on set. Once you have completed that, you will need to connect your light to DMX, either wirelessly through CRMX or wired through 5-pin DMX or Ethernet. If connected with 5-pin DMX, make sure it is plugged into the correct universe. In our case, we patched it into Universe 1. For the MC Pro, let's pair it wirelessly to the Citus 1. First, on the CRMX menu, enable CRMX. If a light was previously paired to a different transmitter, we will need to unlink it. Go ahead and press unlink or unpair. If you already linked this light to a transmitter, there is no reason to relink it. Then on your Citus 1 or CRMX transmitter, if it is not in TX mode, change it to TX mode and then tap the link button to send the pairing signal to the light. The light is connected to the transmitter. Double check the status on the light to verify that you have control over the light. Now let's get these lights rigged and powered. All right, your lights are rigged and configured at the head and they are patched into Citus Link Pro. It is time to start setting levels. Check out our next video for controlling the light parameters.